What's up guys, back with another Honkai Star Wars video. In this video, we're going to talk about should you summon for adventuring. So, bit of a touchy subject here because a lot of people think he's not that great. They think Fushuan's better. Uh, some people say that you should build him as a BBS. Some people think that you should build him as a pure shielder. In my opinion, I do think that as of right now, Fushuan and him are around the same level. Right. I do think he is better and he is going to age better longer because while the damage reduction for the whole team is big, the fact that the shield is just too good, right? The, sh the shields are just, is, they're just too good, right? Because one thing that he will not have to struggle with is when Fushuan gets hit with something that is extremely powerful and AoE, Fushuan will take all the damage from it. I know she takes reduced damage and she's tankier, so most of the time you're fine, but... There's been so many times on something like Swarm or Golden Gears or even when I'm fighting a weekly boss, right? Obviously, mine doesn't die from this, but I noticed Fushuan takes a lot of damage. So if we are getting to a point in an MOC where the enemies are hitting a bit harder, Fushuan might not be able to keep up as much. Even if you have her fully built, there will eventually come a time when the game has to, you know, get harder eventually, right? And... When that time comes, if Fushuan's getting hit a little too hard, there's nothing she can really do about it, right? With venturing, to be fair, you could be like, oh, well, the shields don't matter, right? Well, it's a lot easier to throw up the shield again than it is to, you know, revive Fushuan from dying, right? If your shield goes down and you take damage, it is what it is, right? If you have a healer on the team, you're fine, right? If you don't, you can throw up the shield and just hope that that works, right? But overall, I think that they are around the same. So... If you want, you know, one of the best sustains, you probably want to summon. But let's go over his kit really quickly before I get into the pros and cons of him. And, of course, let me jump into his light cone real quick. His light cone increases defense by 40%, which he scales off of defense. All right, so that's good. When he fried the shield, he increases crit damage by 40% for two turns. And then when his follow-up attack hits, he uh, there's a 100% chance to make the damage taken by the attack target by 10%. This also lasts for two turns. Pretty much what this does is this increases the thing he scales off, which is defense. It gives him 40% crit damage, right? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, you want to build him like a DPS, that's just how it is. And then he gives him a debuff on his follow-up attack, which you can use with Akron. Other than that, you don't need his light cone. So don't worry about it if you can't summon for it. It just enables him to pretty much think of it as a stack stick that gives him a debuff, right? But if you're not running him with Akron, it, the debuff is great, right? 10% extra damage is nice, but it's not needed. Anyway, let's go over his kit. So, first off, we have a deals magic damage equal to 100% of his defense to single target. Pretty basic stuff. Then his skill provides all eyes with fortified wager shield that blocks damage equal to 24% of his defense plus 320, lasting for 3 turns. When fortified wager is gained repeatedly, shield effect can stack up to 200% of the current shield effect provided by the skill. Then, his ultimate... Randomly gains 1 to 7 points of blind bet, then inflicts unnerved on a single target enemy for 3 turns and deals magic damage equal to 270 of his defense to a single target enemy. When an ally hits an unnerved enemy target, the crit damage dealt is increased by 15%. Then, his talent, for a single ally with fortified wager, their effect res increases by 50%. And when they get attacked, Adventuring gains one point of blind bet. When Adventuring has fortified a wager, he can resist crowd control debuffs. This effect can trigger again after two turns. Adventuring additionally gains one point of blind bet after getting attacked. Upon reaching seven points of blind bet, Adventuring consumes seven points to launch a seven hit follow up attack that each each hit dealing imaginary damage equal to 25% of Adventuring's defense. So a single random enemy blind bet is capped at 10 points. This is very nice, right? Because. When you get seven, which could be so easily considering everybody getting hit. Well, let me let me, not, let me get into the rest of the kit before I talk too much about the talent, right? Because I'll start going off. Um, the technique, after using the technique, one of the following effects will be granted. It's like a slot machine, right? There's a chance for defense to increase by 24, high chance for 36, and small chance for 60. When this te technique is used repeatedly, the acquired effect with the highest buff value is retained. When the next battle starts, increases all its chance by the corresponding value lasting for three turns. Big W there. This will help him with having more defense and everyone else being more tanky for a couple turns. Then his bonus traces are 
Bingo! After an ally with forfeit wager launches a follow-up attack, adventuring accumulates one blind bet point. This effect can trigger up three times, and its trigger count resets at the start of adventuring's turn. After adventuring launches its talent's follow-up attack, provides allies with fortified wager that can block damage equal to 7% of adventuring's defense plus 96, and additionally grants a fortified wager that can block damage equal to 7% of adventuring's defense plus 96 to the ally with the lowest shield effect lasting for three turns. Then Hot Hand, when battle starts, grants all allies a fortified wager shield, whose shield effect is equal to 100% of the one provided by the skill, lasting for three turns. And then the last one is Leverage. For every 100 of adventure defense that exceeds 100, sorry, 100, 1600, or 1600, increases his own crit rate by 2% for a maximum of 48. This means you only need to build him with 3000 defense to have the 48% crit rate. Then his stat traces are 35% defense, 14.4 imaginary damage boost, and 10% effect resistance, right? And we'll go over the dupes really quickly. Uh, E1 increases his crit damage by 20% for allies with fortified wager, and, af and after using the ultimate, provides allies with a fortified wager shield, whose shield effects equal to 100% of the one provided by the skill. Then, when using a base attack rate, reduces the target's all types of resistance by 12% for three turns. Then four is when triggering his talent's follow-up attack, the first increase adventuring's defense by 40% for two turns, additionally increases the hits per action for his talent's follow-up attack by three, and then E6 is for every ally that holds a shield damage dealt by adventuring increases by 50% up to a maximum 150. Overall, with his dupes, E1 is really the one that stands out. I mean, you don't need it, but it increases crit damage for allies by 20% and makes it towards ult provides a shield. This is helpful when you get hit with an attack and the enemy is going to attack again. You could ult really quickly and save some allies. Um, not the biggest issue, but it is something that can come in clutch. But otherwise, you don't really need to go for any other dupes. E2, E3, 4, 5, 6, or whatever. They're good, but they're nothing too crazy to try to chase. It's just really just E1 if you really like the character. Now, what this is, is Venturian will have 48% crit rate, right? Combine that with, um, where is it? Do, 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 do the crit damage increase by 15%, right? So he's giving himself not like the perfect amount of crit rate, but enough crit rate to where you can just build crit damage and be fine, right? Obviously, you're going to want a little bit to make sure he actually crits, but gives himself crit rate, gives allies crit damage, gives shields, gives 50% effect res, which I know people are going to be like, okay, well, that doesn't stop them from getting hit with a debuff like Frozen, all that stuff, right? That is correct. However, Fushuan also doesn't quite work like that. When Fushuan can block one skill, you can still get frozen on the next, and she has no way of cleansing it. A lot of people were saying, oh, well, Fushuan, you know, has effect res, or not effect res, like an effect res shield, I guess you could say. And Venturing doesn't. He just increases effect res. He, your allies can still get hit. Fushuan is in the same boat. If you get hit too many times on the same target, they're going to get debuffed, and she can't cleanse it. Venturing can't either, but... That's not something that is just universal that, you know, Fushuan has that he doesn't have. I think they're still pretty on par, but Venturing is also doubling as a DPS while also providing something like Fushuan does. Fushuan provides crit rate, he provides crit damage, and you can slide him in as a DPS. Pretty nice. Plus, you start the fight with a shield. You don't even have to do a technique. It's just, boom, you start with a shield. He is looking pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie to you. Plus, with getting hit over and over with the follow-up attack, you're just going to accumulate a bunch of damage. So if you build him DPS, you're going to get so much value out of him because not only should he provide a shield that will keep you alive through basically anything unless it's like super endgame content, he's also providing damage and providing damage buffs. Now, if you go for his light cone, even more damage buffs, right? Damage increase by 10%, and then he has 40% crit damage and more defense. You don't need it, but it's just there to help you know, push him to new heights in a sense. Now, should you summon for him? I'm gonna be honest with you. If you already have your sustain units, right? Like for me, it's, I have Fushan of Hoho, right? You don't need to summon for him. However, he is on the top or tier of units that, you know, you would qualify for a sustainer. He doesn't heal. So that is one of his issues. If you take damage when your shield is down, you cannot recover it unless you have another healer on the team, which most of the time you're running one sustain. He also cannot cleanse. So 
Really, the only downside is if you don't have enough of your shield, eventually you'll die. And if you get hit with a debuff, you have to let it rock until it either goes away or the unit dies or you just win, right? Overall, though, I do think he is on Fu Shuan level. So if you are looking for a second sustain or to upgrade your sustains, I think he is any very, very good option. His best teams are going to be follow-up attack teams with Ratio, Topaz. Yeah, I mean, it's really just those two. I mean, you can run them with Jing Yun, but the main team people are going to run them with are Ratio, who is free, by the way. So if you started recently and you don't have a sustain, 100% some of this guy. 100%. Him, Ratio, um, a support, like, let's say, like, Ting Yun, um, Branya, if you have her, right, obviously. Um, Sparkle, if you summoned her recently, can also work, right? Whatever, maybe, whatever your sustain is, right? Adventuring, Ratio, Sustain, or Sustain, sorry, I meant Support. Support, and then another unit, and you're, like, good to go, really. Preferably, you'd want Topaz, right? Or you would want someone like Branya. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Branya and Ratio aren't too great together. Branya can help because she has a cleanse. Once we get a support unit that cleanses and is not a sustain, adventuring stocks are going to go crazy because then at that point, the only thing is, as long as your shield is beefy, you'll, you're like a mortal, right? Oh, no, I got hit with a, you know, with a freeze or whatever. Cleanse it with your cleanse unit, right? So hopefully they drop another Branya as character that cleanses the debuff on the support. I'm crossing my fingers. But no, Venturing still absolutely awesome character. I'm probably going to do a couple multis myself just to get my last copy of the links. If I pull him, I'm not stressing about it, but I am going to save for problems. So unfortunately for me, I am skipping this guy. But best of luck if you do summon. Highly think it's a good, good banner to go on. The four stars could be better, but Venturing himself is amazing think about it if you're not going to summon definitely a, a banner you don't miss out on but if you're not summoning yeah no harm to you really we're not at a point in the game where oh this character is unusable luckily we're still one year in rocking the same characters and getting the same results well that that'll be it for the video thanks for watching i'll catch y'all in the next one